Hello, everybody. How you doing today? There we go. All right. So you are here for Miss Crystal Hallwood. Crystal Hallwood is a local private vegan chef and caterer who embraced, embraced the vegan diet in 2012. Ten years. Look at that. As a culinary graduate and foodie, she enjoys veganizing recipes and creating new ones. Crystal works with Vegan Michiana to do food demos promoting easy and delicious vegan foods. And she has shared recipes with Edible Michiana. Crystal is a mother of two amazing girls. That's amazing. Look at that. And an avid distant runner. I'm going to have to talk to you. I'm running a half marathon oh, two, in December. Two. There you go. <laughs> Uh, you can find her at Wild Times on Instagram. Everybody give it up, please, for Crystal. I know them. <laughs> so, so my name's Crystal Hallwood, and um, I am going to make for you guys today, and I have recipes in the back. We're going to do a roasted butternut and pear risotto. We're going to finish it with spiced pecans and green onions. And um, the first thing we're going to do is is saute some shallot. So I started with shallot because we're gonna build some flavor. We're making things that are sweet with the butternut and the pear. So I wanna create a sense of balance. So we're gonna saute these guys. The other thing I'm gonna ask you to do is to pretend that I have an oven and that we, that we all have a glass of wine. <laughs> because risotto is not something that's like a super high action food. It's something that we coax along. Um, you don't leave it, right? We're never gonna walk away from our risotto because um, it'll, it'll do bad things. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna just pretend today. If I was at home with my oven, I would have preheated it and I would have stuck the sheet pan right in the oven empty. I have recipes for you. You do not have to write this down, but bless your heart. And uh, so at the back on your way out, there's a, so you go right ahead. I'll tell you other things. And, uh, but there are recipes in the back, so you can just grab them on your way out. But if I was at home, I'd have my oven on. I'd be preheating my pan because I'd want that sucker sizzling. And then I'm going to use frozen butternut squash because it's just easier. Butternut is an amazing squash, but it's hard. And sometimes breaking it down and peeling it is kind of a pain when you can buy it cubed and frozen that is winning. It's a time saver. So what I'm doing is I'm preheating my little pan and I'm getting it nice and sizzly. And then I'm going to be dicing up my pears. I've done all this in advance because we're on a time schedule, OK? <laughs> so I've chopped up my pears. I've got my butternut ready to go. I've tossed it with olive oil and salt and pepper. I'm going to carefully grab that pan out of the oven because you know, you're know you not used to always grabbing that sheet pan with, uh, with the towel. And I'm going to pull it out carefully so I don't burn myself. Then I'm going to dump my pears and my butternut on there. I'm going to throw it back in the oven at 400 degrees and I'm gonna let that roll for about 15 minutes. While that is happening, I'm gonna dry saute some pecans. So I'm gonna put pecans right in my pan and I'm gonna to start to toast them. And I want them to toast because I want that little bit of fragrancy, that depth of flavor. I'm creating my savory element um, that is gonna go on top of our risotto at the end. And so I'm gonna do that. And you're just doing that to smell and to taste, right? So you're just looking, you're smelling. You, you do not wanna walk away from toasted nuts. They will burn in a hurry. Um, and then right at the end, I'm gonna hit them with olive oil, salt and pepper, continue to toss, and then set those aside. So this has all happened because of the magic of TV, okay? And so now 10 minutes has gone by and I'm gonna go ahead and check my the pan of squash and pear and I'm gonna rotate it, flip it around because I'm trying to develop some caramelization which is a little tricky to do on frozen butternut, but it's okay, we're gonna try. So now I'm sauteing my shallots. There's olive oil and shallot in the pan and now we're gonna go ahead and add our risotto right to it because we're gonna to toast our risotto. I'm making a lot of risotto. I hope everybody's hungry. It's not technically fried rice. I mean, we could do fried rice, but we're not. We're going to do, this is our boreo rice. So our boreo rice, and to do risotto, you really should use our boreo. Our boreo is a short grain rice, but it's high in starch. And so when we're cooking risotto, what we're doing is coaxing the starch out. We're letting it absorb some water, 
and then push it out. Absorb some water and push it out. Risotto is going to taste exactly like whatever you cook it in. So if you cook it in cheap wine, because we're going to add a little wine to deglaze the pan, it's going to taste like cheap wine. Don't do that. Um, so it is literally going to taste. So we're going to make a broth. We're going to add things to it. But right now what we're doing is we're kind of coating this risotto in a little bit of the olive oil with the shallots. I do not want my shallots brown. I want them translucent. We're just sauteing here. I'm putting rice everywhere. The next presenter is going to love me. And we're just kind of toasting it. And we're going to get a little bit of a little bit of a fragrancy. Arborio rice is from Italy, not shockingly, from a region called uh, Piedmont. And Arborio is the town. And I Googled that. And uh, <laughs> so you know. <laughs> um, but it's actually, it's not a fancy dish and it's not a peasant dish. It's just a rice dish. And, um, but it's super versatile. You can make risotto just like any other rice into whatever you want it to be. Um, so we're just going to let it do its thing for just a couple more seconds. You guys can see it on the fancy screen. And maybe you can only see me on the fancy screen. And uh, um, we're just going to coat it. We're just going to get it a little toasty. Not brown, just where you can start to smell things, right? Um, so you could probably only smell the onion, but I'm starting to get a little bit of that starch smell. So at this point, I'm going to drink this. No, I'm going oh. <laughs> to feel better. No. <laughs> oh, hey. Um, <laughs> one of my assistants is here. Um, I am going to deglaze the pan with a little bit of white wine. And um, I use Chardonnay because I'm building my flavors. And again, for me, I've got an oaky Chardonnay. So this is going to create a little depth of flavor when we're doing this. So we're just deglazing the pan. And now it smells good. And then what happens with our risotto when we start feeding in the broth, which we're going to start with not chicken, <laughs> bouillon cubes, and they're vegan. And, but it gives all the savory elements that you would normally get from, um, from a broth. And we don't pour it all in at once, we just feed it in, because again, we're going for this whole suck it up, absorb, and push it back out. We are gonna be adding some butternut squash, which is technically a fruit, Google that too. And um, it has, it's a hybrid between a pumpkin and a gooseneck squash. So um, that little dude has only been around um, since the, I'm gonna say the 1943-ish. Um, and we're going to use Bosque pears. That's my favorite pear. Um, Bosque pears are gorgeous. Um, they're uh, golden brown and they have the elongated necks. And I like them because they're a tiny bit gritty and they're full of flavor. And to me, it is the best pear out there. So I got my deglazing going on. I'm going to add just about a half a cup of water. And right now, if you look at my pan, all you're going to see is water and rice kind of hanging out. And I, I'm waiting. I will continue to feed this guy water until it, it's gone. And so we just wait for it to get a little creamy. I'm going to add one of my chicken broth cubes. We're going to add pecans also. I thought this was kind of interesting. Thank you, Google. Um, pecans can be traced back to the 1500s. And um, they are only grown in, uh, they're native to America, and it's the only tree or the only place you can effectively grow pecans. Um, and we're going to use green onions. And, um, oh, bless your heart, it's here. And um, <laughs> so the girls have our samples. Um, so the other thing, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me while we're coaxing this through. So I've been vegan for 10 years. I have two kids. Um, my girls kind of led me to this little journey. Um, my little one is also gluten-free, so it's like a little nightmare when we go out to eat because we're like, we're vegan, we're gluten-free, and they're like, oh. And um, yeah, they love me. And um, here's your lettuce, but um, no, it's okay. I like to joke that back in the beginning when I first went vegan, you could veganize just about anything. Like I could make just about anything except for meat and cheese, except for now I can also make meat and cheese. And uh, things have gotten better, right? So Satan is super easy to make. and. Um, cheese is actually getting easier and easier to make. Um, and people are vegan for different reasons. Uh, some people in here are not even vegan, they're vegetarian. You might be vegan curious, which, which sounds naughty. Um, <laughs> but uh, we're going we're gonna to 
just assume that you're here because you want to learn some stuff about food, right? Um, and you can do the whole vegan thing because, you know, people are like, I'm not vegan. I met somebody yesterday. I was like, yeah, I'm a vegan chef. He's like, oh, I'm picky. I would never eat anything you eat. And I'm like, really? So like no bananas ever? You don't do tortilla chips or salsa or guacamole? Um, you know, help me understand what it is. Oh, I'm a picky eater. I'm like, okay, you know? <laughs> so, because I, I feel like, Honestly, I put my chili and lasagna against anybody else's too. It's just a matter of building flavors. And we got an action shot. <laughs> but this is actually a really good point because I put that water in and you can see like my pan isn't quite dry, but it's getting there. And that's exactly what I'm looking for because that tells me when it's time to put in more water. So I'm getting close. I can actually turn that up one. So I'm going to do it again, and again, I'm going to drag my spoon right through there. And now that my pan is primarily dry, I'm going to add more water. We're going to let it do its thing. It's technically broth because I put a bullion cube in there, so roll with me. And um, so, and now again, I have a whole bunch of water in here, so I'm just going to wait until that. Can you smell that? I can smell that. All right. So. I like to say when I went vegan, everybody's like, is it hard? Is it so hard to be vegan? You can't eat anything. I can eat all the things for starters, right? It's just, it's gotten much better. It was not hard to go vegan. Um, I did it with my kids and um, I did it because I was kind of quietly hoping to prove them wrong. <laughs> um, I watched, I did. <laughs> um, we had watched um, Forks Over Knives. Um, if you haven't seen that, that's a powerful film. And, um, but I'm a skeptic by nature. So I was like, really, is that true? And so I went vegan for a month and I had a blood draw before and after because I was going to tell my kids, ha! and except for then my cholesterol got better and it wasn't bad, but it got markedly improved. And so I've been vegan ever since. Um, and it was not hard to give up meat. It was not hard to give up. See, we got some sizzle in my pan is dry again. A little more. I'm going to put my other cube in here. So it wasn't hard except for cheese. <laughs> in the beginning, cheese was really hard for me. I like to joke that it's like your hottest ex-boyfriend who comes in the room still looks good. And you're like, dang it, cheese, it's bad for me. <laughs> but you still kind of want the cheese, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and now the cheese substitutes are so much better. And um, Yoko's does a lovely job. And there's lots of other um, brands that are coming up and doing really, really wonderful things. Um, so it's kind of an exciting time to be vegan. Um, I got a piece of mail the other day that told me that even um, Panda Express now has a vegan chicken dish. Um, you can get a vegan Whopper. Um, I'm not a big fan of fast food to begin with, but this is, I mean, it's nice to know that you can go out and be stuck on a road trip and, and have something to eat. Because prior to that, it was going to a gas station, getting a banana and a granola bar, <laughs> which I'm okay with too. But <laughs> then you have people who go vegan because of ethics. You have people who go vegan for the animals. You have people who go vegan because they want to have a smaller footprint um, carbon wise. Um, and, you know, anything you do is totally fine. Try again. So I got a little more water in here. We're just letting it do its thing. Last night, I was a little nervous about doing this. I would have been more nervous if I'd known about the microphone and the videoing. Uh, videoing. But, uh, but I had a dream that Gordon Ramsay was my sous chef. So if anybody's bringing him out as a surprise, that would be welcome. <laughs> so that would be awesome, wouldn't it? Um, this is hysterical because like half my running friends are here. Come on in. <laughs> um, so people also ask me questions about the fact that aren't, you know, if, you're, if you're vegan or you're vegetarian, are you tired? You know, do you have energy? Where do you get your protein? You know, you hear that all the time. Where do you get your protein? And um, where do you get yours? You know, like I, I can actually tell you how much protein I had for breakfast this morning because I pay attention to it. Um, but can can my non-vegan people tell me what they, you know, I mean, they just assume we're protein deficient. Like, you know, I'm not. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a marathon runner. I run, you know, I mean, right now I'm running like 20 to 25 miles a week, which is not a lot in my distance club. Um, but I don't have any trouble with energy <laughs> and I've only had two cups of coffee today. So we're getting close to the point where we're going to start feeding in our dairy product our non-dairy product. So I don't know if you can see this, but our, our risotto is coming along and our, our broth, you can't anymore, can you? It's just me. 
um, but it's, it's starting to get thicker. So it's gonna be, right now it's al dente. I can see that by looking at it because I can still see the white in the center of my rice. Um, it's almost two different colors, um, but it'll come along shortly. It takes typically 25 minutes-ish to get my risotto all the way done. Um, depends on how much you have in your pan, depends on you know, how high our, our, uh, our little burner gets, and this is a little induction thing, so it's not nearly as, as strong as my gas burner at home, but it's coming along. So the next thing we're gonna do is add some cashew milk. I use unsweetened cashew milk. This is my favorite thing to cook with. Um, cashews for me have um, a little bit more mouthfeel. Um, there's a little bit more fat in there. It's, it's a more neutral flavor for me. When I use almond milk, everything in the world, there's nothing wrong with almond milk, okay? <laughs> but all I can taste after that is almonds. So, <laughs> so I like the cashew because for me, I still get the mouthfeel, I still get the fat, and, um, and I don't have that background taste. Um, so my risotto is coming along nicely. It's starting to look for this cashew milk. We're gonna add about, about a cup, but I'm gonna do about a half cup now because I just wanted to keep doing this thing. While that's going, we're gonna add a little bit of onion powder because I just wanna make sure it's really flavorful. It's gonna be good. I'm gonna add some Italian seasoning because I wanna have this depth of flavor, right? The other thing that goes really well with butternut squash is sage. So I'm gonna add a little bit of sage. I'm very fancy, I just throw it in my bag when I'm done. All right. We're gonna add a little bit of garlic powder. I purposefully did not put raw garlic in my, in my dish in the beginning because I feel like that'd be too much of a competing flavor with my pears and my butternut. So I left it out. And then we're gonna use some nutritional yeast. I don't know, my non-vegan people don't probably know what nutritional yeast is, but it's magic. <laughs> magic in a bag so it smells like cheese it's not cheese it's nutritional yeast right and everybody's like what so trade you know trader joe's fresh time all of those people have it um i got this at trader joe's and you use it kind of as an enhancement as a as a seasoning um a savory element so i'm going to sprinkle some of our nutritional yeast i like to be generous so we're putting a lot in and so now we've got some nutritional yeast. My pan is getting dry again. So we're gonna feed in some more milk. Risotto is a by feel environment as well. So like, if it takes you a little longer, it takes you a little longer. This is why you gotta have a glass of wine while you're making this stuff. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's a group thing. So it's going along. It's almost creamy enough. Not quite. Where are, what? I know we have another chef behind us, so I don't want to go too late, right? <laughs> so, so we're going to go here. The next thing I'm going to add is some vegan Parmesan. Um, Dairy-free vegan Parmesan. Um, you can get this. A lot of different companies are making this now, too. This is Follow Your Heart. Um, I had a brand, I think it's called Forager, um, that I used the other day that was really nice. Um, I think Trader Joe's even has a uh, vegan and gluten-free um, Parmesan cheese. So we're going to add lots of it. <laughs> That might have been a tiny too much, but nobody's ever mad about it, even if it's, even if it's vegan cheese. All right, so I still, vegan cheese, or risotto should be nice and creamy. Now we're coming. I got a little bit of vegan butter. I, I use, uh, this one is country crock plant butter. Um, Miyoko's, again, makes a delicious, oh, butter, not that one. This is just going to make it glossy and give it a nice mouthfeel. 
I'm gonna throw this one in my bag. You can't see this, but it's making me very happy. All right, we're just about there. So in here I have from the oven <laughs> my pear and my butternut. I'm just gonna fold that, oh, fold that in. So you don't wanna cook your whole risotto with that in it. It's gonna turn orange if we do that and our vegetables are gonna be super mushy and we don't want that. I picked this because I think it's a nice fall dinner. I think that I was thinking about this. So I would do this for Thanksgiving. If I was gonna make this my entree for the evening, I'd probably do like a spicy vegan Italian sausage because I think the spice would play really nicely against that risotto element because we got all that sweetness going on. So the last things we're gonna do is we're gonna top it. Well, I'm gonna taste it and make sure it's done. And I want you to have crunchy risotto. <laughs> so I actually do want to cook that guy a little bit more, but we're going to see how our, how our little sample is. You guys have spoons, right? All right. Yeah, that one's still working. All right, we're gonna test this guy. with green onion. All right, I'm gonna stir that.
right, they're going to dish up some samples. Our guy up here, I can't stir with it because I have my spoon now, is, uh, <laughs> I know, <laughs> I'm going to do that. Um, yeah, I'm very naked right now, feeling very vulnerable. Um, so, yeah, so we're good. And now we have savory risotto. Um, you could do this with cauliflower steaks. You could do this as uh, with that sausage we talked about. My absolute favorite risotto to make is a lemon risotto. You do the risotto exactly the same way. And then at the end of it, instead of adding our butternut and our pecan, fresh squeezed lemon and lemon zest. Delicious. I made it all summer long. Couldn't get enough of it. So does anybody have questions about risotto or being a vegan or running? Because um, I'll cover all of that. Yes, sir. somebody who wants to deglaze with wine, you can deglaze with your veggie stock. That's no problem. Absolutely. Yeah. Any neutral oil that makes you happy is totally fine. I just, I use olive oil for an awful lot of things. So it's just convenient for me. I also have avocado oil on my counter at home. Um, my daughter happens to love the stuff. So definitely. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Um, any unflavored oat milk. Don't do anything sweetened. Don't do anything vanilla. You could do rice milk. You can do oat milk. You can do almond milk. Whatever makes you happy. Yes. Yeah. That's why I like it. Questions? Other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. And that's hard. That, that is a hard thing to do. What I do earlier, he, he's like, I told you. And uh, so I saw that. Um, what I did earlier is I preheated my pan in the oven before I added the butternut to it, because then as soon as it hits the hot pan, I'm getting a sear. So, and I also toss it with a little bit of olive oil and I do it right from frozen chunks. I don't let it defrost at all. If I, I smack that bag on the counter, break those guys up, toss it with some olive oil, throw it on an already heated pan, put it right in the oven. Now, if I didn't have, if I didn't have an oven that was, you know, at, like t today, I almost did it in a pan saute environment. Um, I would have done high heat pan saute because it's going to finish in my rice. But, oh, yay. <laughs> so <laughs> awesome. Yeah, but that's what I would do. Yes, way in the back. So, you could get there without a non-dairy milk, okay? It's not going to look quite as creamy, um, but yes, you could, you could coax it along without it. You're going to get a similar animal, right? It's not going to be exactly the same, but you're going to get a similar, a similar thing. That adds a little bit of richness and that creamy element that we kind of associate with risotto. It's a substitute for real milk, right? Because I used cashew, you could use oat, you know, but in traditional risotto, they use milk. And so, you know, if you didn't use milk, you're still going to get a creamy rice. It's not going to be quite as rich as if you used an alternate. Questions? Other questions? We good? All right. How is it? Awesome. Yes, for sure. And not a sweet white wine. Not a sweet one. Yeah, I used Chardonnay. Yes, ma'am? So, you, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm going to judge you. <laughs> okay. No. 
Um, you don't, you don't want to, you should use a wine that you think tastes good to you before you cook it. I used Kendall Jackson Chardonnay. I like it. It's my go-to shard for cooking and drinking, but uh, it's got a little bit of nuttiness to it. It's got a little bit of oakiness to it. It's got a big flavor. I don't want anything sweet. I've already got enough sweet things going on with the butternut and the pear. Great. Great. Other last minute questions? Anybody? I did salt and pepper and a little olive oil today. I did those in a dry roast up top. Yep, dry roast up top. The question and answer sense is so much more fun for me, so thank you. <laughs> so any other questions? I put my pecans in and I toast them, just flip them in my pan until they're starting to get brown, and then at the very last minute, maybe a tablespoon of the olive oil or vegan butter, and then salt and pepper. You could put cayenne, you could put paprika, whatever makes you happy. Yeah, there are recipes in the back and samples in the front. <laughs> All right? All right. Well, you guys have an awesome day. Thank you so much for coming to see me. And have fun at Veg Vegan Fest.